K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello gamers, simmers, and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer, and welcome to the tour around the world. Well, maybe not quite around the world, but it's featuring Microsoft Flight Simulator 2. The classic Flight Simulator 2. Um, not as classic as Flight Simulator 1, but that one is a awful mess. <laughs> Don't know if you want to go that far. Uh, if uh, you're wondering why, just take a look at the few Flight Simulator 1 videos that are on this channel, and uh, you'll see that yeah, they're kind of a bit of a mess. That's probably because of an emulator, but I don't know. Um, I am tried running it on PCEM, which uh, is technically supposed to run just like the real thing, but uh, it looks bad. And maybe it looks like that uh, for real on a real machine. Um, I've been told no, it should look right. Um, I did see one screenshot of Flight Simulator 1 that looked correct. Um, and I know it was Flight Simulator 1 because the controls were similar, but they weren't exactly the same. Uh, like a few things were missing. So that I knew that was Flight Simulator 1. And oh, I would love to get it to look right and do some videos, uh, do some proper videos with it. But um, have not had that kind of success. But I'm not going to let uh, that hold me back. Um, it's awful to look at. <laughs> but um, not leaving it out. Still going to do what we can with that. But. Getting on to Flight Simulator 2, we are here at Greater Kankakee, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about where we're going next. And if you've been following the other flight simulators, you would know that we're going from Greater Kankakee here to Bloomington Normal. We are following the same flight plan just as the other simulators. You may be thinking, why? Why don't you just do something different on all of them? Because by doing all of these other, uh, doing the same flight plan, you can go and compare, uh, compare one simulator with another. Now, yes, there have been some comparisons, uh, but no one else is doing full flights on these old simulators. And wouldn't it be cool to see uh, oh, flying to Champagne and then seeing it in Flight Simulator 3 and then 4 and 5 and X-Plane, you know, seeing that same flight and just seeing how things were just getting better on that particular type of flight or flying to St. Louis and, and, and seeing it build up and flying along the Mississippi River, right? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to kind of see that comparison? And not just some general, well, yeah, here's a little bit of Flight Simulator 2, here's 3, 4, you know. Um, that's the whole idea. That's the kind of idea that I've got here. I mean, one, I'm trying to relive some old memories. Uh, in this case, I'm making new memories because I didn't have the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2. I had the Sublogic one for Commodore 64. Uh, but, you know, I'm uh, doing this for you guys too. So that way you can release, relive some old memories. Hey, maybe you played Flight Simulator 2 uh, and flew all kinds of places with the scenery discs, and we'll be doing that too. So that's it. This is where we're going, Bloomington Normal. It's a bit of a distance, so we got a bit of a flight here, and along this way, we're not going to see uh, much or anything at all because <laughs> there's no no roads or anything. At least I don't think there are. Um, 
it's probably just going to be all black. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we will we will keep ourselves entertained here. First things first. Let's get our nav radios all set up. My ear is itching. That's better. Let's give Nav 1 a shot. 108.2 is Bloomington. Nav 1 in 1. 108.2. Yes. 60 miles away. Not yes because it's far. Yes because we can actually tune it in. We don't have to... Uh, Set a set another uh, vor signal behind us, so that way we can fly. We don't need to. We we can do this. We can fly right there. The vor is centered on the airport. And speaking of centered, we're going to use V one for vor one. Plus and minus makes it go down and up. Going to go ahead and center that. around 234 and that is the direction we need to go to get there not too bad not too hard I don't think now we're just gonna go ahead and get things started so M is magnetos M2 is left take a look at this right over here uh, MAGS a little hard to read but that's because we're using the composite uh, display option. That's how you get all these colors is composite. Just like a TV. <laughs> like a uh, Atari 2600 on a TV. Uh, M2 I'm sorry, M3 is right. M4 is B for both and M5 is start. We are on. We're starting. And we're going to go ahead and F2 is uh, throttle down. F3 is throttle up is F3. We're going to go ahead and uh, move that. And our rudder, because our auto coordination is off. On the numerical keypad, it's plus. Going this direction. Now the control card will actually tell you it's the enter key. Maybe on an old SXT it was. But on a modern keyboard with an emulator, it's not. It's the plus key. Trust me. And whatever you do, do not hit the period on the numerical keypad. <laughs> it will reset. It will reset and you'll lose where you're at. You'll have to... You have to go into the edit mode and put in the coordinates of the airport and trying to slew yourself around is um, it takes a little bit to get used to because uh, forward is not forward forward is north and uh, the others are south and east and all of that oh I think way maybe so yeah you know you could be going forward and uh, actually be going a completely different direction than you thought I'm going forward no I'm not I'm going to the left no I'm going backwards why is that no. maybe that has to do with the emulator maybe because the numerical keypad does not quite match up the same way or Maybe that's just how it really is. It really was going north, going south, going east, going west. Not forward, backward. They probably got some feedback saying, hey, man, this sucks. Can you do something different? Yep, we'll work on that with Flight Simulator 3. Man, Flight Simulator 3 compared to Flight Simulator 2 was a nice little step up. Flight Simulator 3 and 4, well, they look relatively the same. Flight Simulator 4 is definitely the superior one. You get yourself third-party scenery and tools. 
custom content and you can create your own content. You can program adventures and have it play voice uh, files, um, audio files, so that way you can have some ATC and chatter. And of course, you know, it takes work to put all that together, but the results are incredible. Don't believe me? Take a look at my Flight Simulator 4 series. Not of the World Tour. I haven't done it on that yet because I didn't know how. Uh, but look at the one that is a Sublogic USA Tour. And you will see the work that I put into it. They are cinematics. There's no talking on there other than the ATC and the chatter. We stopped. <laughs> Get our throttle back up. And I wrote original, well, composed uh, original music uh, for the flights. They are full flights, so there's not music going through the entire thing. Uh, just parts of it. Yeah, just kind of break up the monotony a little bit. And I was inspired. Uh, some people do flights, full flights, and some do just partial flights. And uh, some just do little sections and throw some music in the background. And so I got you know, inspired to maybe do a little bit of both. Check them out, they're fun. And if you really can't watch the whole thing, that's okay. Take a look at uh, the description. You gotta extend it, uh, and there is a there's a chapter list. Click on the one you want to go to, or you can just watch from the beginning, watch part of it, and pick up where you left off. I make it easy. Try to make it easy for you guys. Plus, it kind of shows you. Um, where we're going and the route. Um, I do some, I point out uh, places of interest, like, oh, this is that city, this is this airport, that's this mountain range. So it's kind of a little bit of a, a, you know, it's a tour, you know. Do a little bit of sightseeing. Nothing else like that uh, out there. And it's understandable, you know, people want to play the, the newer sim simulators and go off the taxiway into the dirt. Uh, <laughs> but I'm trying to do some stuff that, you know, a little different, a little unique for the channel. It's going to take us forever to get to the end here. It's like we're stuck. Get some speed going here. Now, just so you know, um, on the settings... I have realism on, so that way if we run out of fuel, well, engine cuts off. Um, lights will burn out if you keep them on the whole time. Actually, no, I don't think they do. I think that's your, your reliability setting that you, they can go off. But if you have reali um, realism on, then when it gets dark, um, your dash mostly disappears. Don't believe me? L for lights. <laughs> I like how it does it on the Commodore 64, though. It's like it slowly redraws it, just like nice and smooth, just kind of like disappears. Instead of these black boxes over everything. By the way, we've advanced the time about an hour and a half. Nope, sorry, 30 minutes. 
had a little bit of realism, you know, we landed here, took 30 minutes, got ourselves some food, said hi to a few folks, you know, they're excited, oh man, look, it's Killer Gamer, he's doing that tour, let's all go say hi to him, get his autograph, <laughs> I'm not that famous. Hey, nice to meet you. Gotta go. Got a lot of places to go and see. I got a long life ahead of me so that way I can get these videos done <laughs> I want to get around the world it's gonna take a while yeah I could rush around the world if I want to but I don't want to do that but I am doing cinematics of some longer flights like north to South America I'll do like an Africa tour and a Caribbean tour. You know, we're not going to be sitting there jumping from small airport to small airport. So, so in a sense, there's going to be kind of like a secondary world tour. So that way I'm not having to wait 10 years to get it to a certain area. But my life is half over. I'm 48... 49 next year. I'm hoping to live until I'm 100. Maybe past that. And still have my wits about me. That's what I'm hoping. Alright, so... I think we're all set. Let's go ahead and throttle up here. <laughs> looking for the right key. Uh, F4 would do full throttle, but uh, I've done that before and it shuts the uh, engine off. So I'm just slowly pull that up there. We got a little bit of up elevator trim. So that should nicely pull us off the ground there. we go. Up we go. G for landing gear. Got that going up. And uh, let's see here. D will reset our gyro compass here. Match it up with our magnetic compass. And it also pulls up a scoreboard for whatever reason. Hit D again. That goes away. And we need to go ahead and turn to 234, actually a little bit uh, past that. And that road there in front of us is going to go to Champaign, which is not where we're going. Not yet. And now I'm uh, going way too past 234. Uh, let's get ourselves turned around again. Oh, we might have some scenery. You might have a little bit of scenery here. Maybe I was thinking there was no scenery because there were clouds in one of the other ones and we couldn't see anything. Possible. I don't know. One of those white lines there might actually go to Bloomington. So I don't get us on the right vector here. And I've been, like, leveling out at 4,000, but I don't think we need to go that high. Whoa. Jeez. i stop resting my fingers on the keypad. A 
you wanted to add some realism, you can put in like two layers of clouds, you know. Then you can go up to higher altitudes and have a little bit of realism. I like to keep it low so that way we're not having we're not having the struggle uh, with depth perception trying to get this uh, trying to get this lined up <laughs> with an airport. We're trying to fit, you know, trying to see it from a distance, which you know, with these graphics, not too easy. But with a little bit of practice, uh, you can definitely do it. We'll get ourselves leveled off here. We're almost there. Just some minor adjustments here with throttle. So let's go over the control uh, panel. You probably know what most of this is, but um, we'll just go over it anyway. So this is your speedometer. <laughs> um, I don't think it's called a speedometer. Maybe it's called an odometer. I don't know. This is, uh, you know, your speed, knots, attitude indicator, turn indicator. I never really look at that. Um, you got your slip slide and... Uh, water slip and slide things in here. Usually want to keep uh, this centered um, if you got auto, auto coordination off, but um, I don't worry about it too much in this simulator. Uh, your gyro compass uh, relatively accurate until it starts sliding away. Uh, so use your magnetic compass over here to kind of keep them in sync. Uh, let your vertical indicator, vertical speed indicator, whatever that's called, let you know how fast and how slow you're going up or down. Altimeter and your OBS, uh, your Omni bearing something. <laughs> <laughs> what you use to uh, get yourself lined up with whatever nav radio or a VOR out there that you're trying to follow. Your OMI, outer marker, middle marker, inner marker, when you uh, tie into an L uh, ILS. Your COM for ATIS. NAV1, NAV2, transponder, doesn't do anything. DME, distance measuring equipment, connected to NAV1. Your clock, time. RPMs. Re what, revolutions per minute? Is that what that is? Uh, don't really look at this. And then here you've got gear. Your landing gear telling you it's up or down. Lights. They're on. Mags. Magnetos. We're on B for both. Got your fuel. Got your oil. Oil temperature. Oil pressure. This really doesn't come into play until you select something else for your uh, like uh, the reliability so if you set your reliability um, it will randomly uh, after so much time it will uh, break a, a, a something and sometimes your engine will break and you'll start seeing this thing heat up or your oil heats up and your engine just goes You gotta kind of coast it, coast it down. They used to be fun. Uh, the Commodore 64, I would set that up and then, you know, try to glide it to an airport. 
but it gets a little bit annoying. So look at the Commodore uh, 64 video from was it Lansing? It's the one that goes to Dubuque? No, La Crosse. To La Crosse, it's Wisconsin. Uh, I had reliability set to 99% and two things broke at 99% after that I was like mm, nope <laughs> put it back to 100 I wanted a chance of something breaking uh, not you know the whole half the thing breaking because with my luck, well, at least it didn't happen on that one, but my luck, uh, the engine would break down or something. That, that kind of makes it a little annoying when you're trying to fly and make a video. We've hit midnight. We're hit midnight. Zero, 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 22 seconds. And that looks like that's the end of our road. So, yep, no scenery goes out here. It is black. Completely black. So we are IFR, folks. We are IFR heading our way to Bloomington. But in case you kind of miss some scenery, just kind of look out the windows here. Uh, you have to hit your uh, scroll block. Scroll block. Scroll lock. And your numerical keypad, as you would expect. Uh, five would be down, eight would be ahead, and two would be behind you, and you know, just kind of going around playing. So, you can at least take a look behind us and see stuff. And what's so cool is that there's a blinking, there's a little blinking thing back here. I like that. It's not there on Flight Simulator 3, but they did bring it back on Flight Simulator 4. It's like a cute little thing. And we got a little, 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 uh... What was it? A nav light or something? Let people know we're out here? Even though there really isn't anyone else out here? A little green thing on that side? Uh, we just got gray on that side. Got blue wings. If you were a blue angel. Flying in a Cessna. <laughs> 46 miles to go. Alright, so let's go ahead and share some information with you. Let's do a little comparison of the Sublogic Flight Simulator 2 along with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2. Uh, let's see. Checking in my mind messages here to see if I got anything new. Nope, I don't. Oh, something about they might be giants. Oh, never mind. I, I'm wishing that, that was, apparently. Okay. I'll have it up on the screen here. Sublogic Flight Simulator 2. at it here on Wikipedia. So Sublogic Flight Simulator 2. This came out in 1983. Uh, do we have a specific date? Not really. So Apple II is when it came out uh, uh, for the 1983. Atari 8-bit 84. Uh, PC 98 and 86. Uh, the Amiga Atari ST TRS-80 came out in 1987. 
That Flight Simulator 2 was more of a Flight Simulator 3 from Sublogic because it was better graphics. It was the third generation. Commodore 64, 1984. 64, 84. Kind of easy to remember there. But development says here, after the release of Sublogic's Microsoft Flight Simulator for the IBM PC, Sublogic backported its improvements to other computers as Flight Simulator 2. Okay, so I did get my history right. Sublogic Flight Simulator 2 came out first before Microsoft Flight Simulator 2. This version, like the Microsoft release, did away with wireframe graphics for solid colors and featured real-world scenery, although limited to a few areas in the United States. It also introduced simulator add-ons. What add-ons? I don't remember any add-ons other than scenery. Although not in the form it is today, uh, as Sublogic also included functionality to load additional scenery from floppy disks, thus making it possible for a user to virtually fly in his or her own backyard. Not quite. Flight Simulator 2 was released in December 1983 for Apple II. This is a <laughs> considered a complicated but exhilarating game. Bruce Artwick has really done it all. Big thanks to Bruce Artwick. He made all of this possible. Uh, here is a screenshot um, of Sublogic Flight Simulator 2. You'll see it's a little different. We'll take a look at a... Oh, here we go. Uh, can we zoom in here? I don't think so. But you see how this is a little bit different? I'm not talking about the colors either. Uh, but it's all kind of crossed here. Things are slightly a little different. That's because they're two different planes. They are two different planes. Here, I'll go ahead and remove this. So that way you can see the actual uh, flight Microsoft Flight Simulator 2. This is the uh, control panel of a Cessna, as you would expect because it's been a Cessna on uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then we get to this. This is not a Cessna. Yes, I was surprised by that too. I just thought it was. I assumed it was. It's not. It's a Piper Archer. Yes, that is interesting. Oh, and what's interesting about Sublogic Flight Simulator 2 is, well, the Apple one was apparently the only one that had actual color. Well, I mean, the Commodore 64 had color, but not like this. This is like a rainbow of fruity flavors. Go ahead and close that. Flight Simulator 2 is a sequel to FS1 Flight Simulator. Well, let's see if we can find Microsoft Flight Simulator. This you can see this logo over here is actually from 2020. Flight Simulator 2020, that's gonna be coming out. Let's see, do we have a history here somewhere? Where's all the flight simulator ones at? Microsoft Flight. Well, we don't want that one. <laughs> okay, Microsoft Flight Simulator 1.0. Uh, take a look at uh, this. This is what it's supposed to look like. And, well, you can see a few things are missing. Transponders over here. So, yeah, this, this is definitely Flight Simulator 1. Uh, even the control panel, you know, it's not filled in or anything. And the graphics look fine. Uh, if you were to run that on an emulator, it won't look like that. <laughs> It'll look pretty bad. And Microsoft Flight Simulator 2, this was released in 1984. So one year after the Apple. Same year as the Commodore 64. Kind of looks like this, uh, but that's if you select, uh, I forget which monitor function. It's not going to look like what we have here unless you select composite monitor. And then, you know, we can go to Flight Simulator 3 and 4, you know, if we want to. We don't need to. 
we were just comparing Flight Simulator 2 from Microsoft uh, in comparison to Sublogic. Microsoft, it's just pretty much a port. It's a port of Sublogic, uh, Flight Simulator 2. Just ports. Uh, although um, 1982 Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, that was kind of the you know, it was done by Bruce Artwick and stuff. And we still have 35 miles to go. <laughs> Do we still have any scenery behind us? Nope. Wait a minute. What's going on here? How about if I click on the window? So yes, we still got some scenery back there. Actually, I can still see Kankakee. It's right back here. Right here. Still got some roads. We're not completely in the abyss. Oh, my, my, my. Uh, let's see. Just slightly off course. We'll use our rudder here. That might be a little too much. Oh, no, that's right. This is kind of kind of slipped away from the magnetic compass. Come on, rudder. This is a little bit. Get to 236. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. We're at 236. Which, yeah, we'll get that. We'll hit D. There we go. Hit it again. Get rid of the score. Maybe that score is for the World War I ace. That might be. Uh, so that way where you're shooting down uh, the biplanes or whatever it is, um, it's keeping a score. So maybe, maybe, you know, maybe that is an actual scoreboard. You just pull it up with the D key. D for dogfight? Only thing I can think of. Ugh. I am working on getting a copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2, an official copy of it, just for collection purposes. Would love to get Microsoft Flight Simulator 1 for collection. I got the book. <laughs> I got the book. I also have the maps. I got that because there was a guy that just had all this stuff that he was needing to get rid of. And uh, sold it, and I picked it up, and it wound up being a treasure chest. I wound up getting um, all the maps that I needed for the Sublogic USA East. That was good. Because uh, the first version I got of Sublogic USA East was just the discs. I didn't... wasn't in a box or anything like that. But then I found it again, and I was able to get it in a box. Living in a box. Oh 
I do keep misplacing that thing? So I'll show you the original. The original Chicago map. I may have already done that. Lights. Oh, okay, so I can give you the proper names of everything on this uh, dash now. <laughs> Air speed indicator, attitude indicator, your artificial horizon, altimeter, turn coordinator with slip skid indicator, heading indicator, your directional gyro. It's also, you know, great. Uh, sandwich type of thing. Vertical speed or rate of climb indicator right here. Nav radios, transponder, magnetic compass right up here. Omni bearing indicator with glide slope right here. Glock, Glock, Clock. No. Clock and gear were like next to each other, so I said Glock. Nope, you don't have a gun. <laughs> Lights, magnetos, carburetor heat. Down here, I forgot about that. Outer, middle, inner marker lights, fuel tanks left and right, oil temperature, oil pressure, tachometer, tachometer, <laughs> tachometer, not tachometer. And got all my controls in here too in this book. Where is my... I have it on one of these other manuals here. I'm using it for a bookmark or something. Nope, not in there. Thought I saw something flash. my stinking map next time I find it I'm gonna scan it oh maybe I put it no no yes maybe possible Got some other handbooks for Microsoft Flight Simulator not in there. Ah. Twenty four miles away. Southern West Germany, Southern United Kingdom, Northern France, the Europe area. <laughs> oh, that's because Chicago was on the other side of another map. That's why I couldn't find it. So, let me show you. Five airports. Chicago Midway, Chicago Hare, Greater Kankakee, Megs, and Williard Champaign. That is all that you've got. So, here you go. As you can see, you can see Megs, there's Chicago Hare, Midway. You can see there's Vores, <laughs> but there's no DuPage Airport. There's no Joliet Airport. It's all blank there. Um, go down south here. There's Greater Kankakee. Sanger, all those airports are not there. Um, Pontiac. Trans Am. Why is that not focusing there? Um, there 
Champagne. But yeah, no, I can't even see Bloomington on here. Yeah, the, the Bloomington uh, Vore is not even on this map. And it's like that for the other maps as well. Um, there's like five airports. So like New York. The five airports there is Block Island, Kennedy, Logan, Martha's Vineyard, and Sikorsky. And there's vores, all kinds of vores. Uh, they're out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> See? Well, there's that. Uh, but you go this way, and, uh, well, see, there's a lot of ores. You can do, a, do some IFR flying and do some sightseeing. Uh, there's not, nothing up there. Make sure you bring plenty of fuel with you. So there's that, and uh, Seattle. And there were... Yeah, there's more on that one. Boeing Field, Fairchild, Issaquah, Olympia, SeaTac, and Shohomish. You had six on there. Plus someone wrote in AC. Air conditioner? I don't know. <laughs> and then we got the Los Angeles area. And we've got, got a few more airports in this one. Catalina, Hughes, John Wayne, Orange County. That's one. Los Angeles, San Diego, Santa Monica, and then the noise. The Nyes, however that's pronounced. Get a little better of a map here. Uh, so, and, and of course I can show this to you here. So you've got some airports here, and you can fly a little bit up there, and you can fly downwards, and you know, there's one there. So. The New York one, I think, is kind of like the worst map because uh, there's like nothing up in the northwestern part. Oh, and we got San Francisco and the Oakland area. So it's like all the areas, you know, there's it's just like Flight Simulator 2. Uh, it's just Flight Simulator 2 added more airports. Um, another thing, too, is those original airports had the taxiways. And all the airports they added in Flight Simulator 2, they don't have taxiways. They're just the runways. Notice the pattern? Oh, my. What's this? Oh. Yeah, I got this for Flight Simulator 98. Flight Deluxe. Great Britain. Got some Canada scenery too. And I will be doing a flight on this. Pro Pilot 98, 99, sorry. We'll be doing a series on that as well. I also got Fly 2K Special Edition. I don't have Fly uh, the first one. Um, I will be getting that doing a series on that. Um, try to do a world, well, those, uh, it's like United States, maybe a little bit of Canada, and that's about it. But we'll try to, you know, kind of follow along like we are on the Commodore 64. What we can in the, uh, the U.S. Now, and I think you guys will like that. I mean, no, I, I don't see anyone else doing actual flights on those. Maybe just a smidgen here and there. But this will give you a chance to compare the Microsoft Flight Simulators with uh, the competition. See how it looked. And not just graphics, but, you know, how did it play? How did it fly? What kind of features did it have that Microsoft didn't have? Hey, I'm going way off uh, target here. Let's 
because I was using my Aralons. Fourteen miles away. We're heading directly to it, so it should be in front of us somewhere. Should be seeing it soon. We're at four thousand. 500 feet. I think it's time to... <laughs> I think it's time to start our descent. What do you think? Now we're in the abyss. It's the great nothing from the never-ending story. It's the nothing. But we got something. Our DME is turned into something. Which is good. Because <laughs> on the scenery discs, I've been testing them out. And uh, I'll be flying to, like, St. Louis. And, you know, everything's working on the DME. And then I get to, like, 15, 20 miles away. And then, poof, it disappears without a trace. I don't know why. And it does it on Chicago Hair, too. I don't know why. <laughs> Didn't have enough room on the disc, I guess? Yeah, so when we get to the scenery disc on this one... Um, yeah. There's going to be some airports we're not going to be able to go to. crap, where's the airport? Can we at least see the city? Possibly. Oh, I'm hungry. I need a snack. Maybe they turn the airport off. It'll be like airplane, the first airplane, and the uh, that guy's like pulls the plug. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All the lights on the airport go off. Runway lights go off. Maybe that guy is at this airport. Fun fact, though. Do you know which airport that was? That was that was an airplane. Chicago, Chicago O'Hare. Oh, come on now. Nine miles away and there's no airport? is over here. Watch there not actually be an airport. <laughs> there is on the Commodore 64. Hey, we shot. We, we looked at it on the map. Of course, that's the Commodore 64 version, but... There should be something. Come on, we're eight miles away. We should be seeing something out here. We did on the other ones. We saw like little blue little marks or something. Let's take a look at our radar. 
Maybe zoom out or something. I'm not seeing anything. Seven miles away and there's nothing? <laughs> this is going to be like Flight Simulator 1. The Vore is out here, but there's no airport. Yeah, 6.8 miles away, and it's dark. The airport's not on this one. You guys forgot an airport. Well, if anything, we'll fly to the Vor and we'll have a to-be-continued um, episode. <laughs> it's gone! To be continued. Same time, same channel, same bat channel next week. Five point seven miles, there's nothing yet. That airport's not in the scenery. But you know what? It might be in it might be on the uh, scenery disc. This might be a good time to switch over to the other scenery disc. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch floppies, control F four. We'll do that. Now we're gonna hit E. That's our scenery disc, USA, Chicago, St. Louis, Cincinnati, press any key to continue. Yes! Now we got scenery. We're a bit close. I found a solution. <laughs> and now that we're using scenery disc number nine, wait for it. Look at the black spot below me. Boop. <laughs> okay, land the gear down. G. G. Whiz. Batman. What is this? What is that thing? Maybe it's a UFO. Okay, we better get some flaps down. We're going at 80 knots. That's not good. Better lower our speed some more, too. Well, that was a good demonstration of turning on scenery disc number nine. Yeah, so we're all set to go now. See, I was going to do scenery disc number nine um, when we get ready to leave Champagne, but now nah, we don't need to do that. I think we're good. We'll put scenery disc number nine on right now. What are these little things? power lines or something? And the runways are a little bit different. This looks like it's outlined in blue rather than being completely blue. These are not the pressing uh, blue runways. to the side here. Trying to line up. 
what? Oh, this thing looks like it has fuel. It looks like we're going to hit the ground here in a moment. Uh, actually, yeah, it looks like we're definitely going to land here. Uh, uh, let's add some power. <laughs> it is a blue runway, never mind. It has fuel! Look at that! It doesn't have taxiways, but it has fuel. Easy does it. Let's not crash. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yay! We're here. We're here at Bloomington, Bloomington Normal. And yay, because it was not on the original default uh, disc. That was an interesting discovery, wasn't it? So it's on the Commodore 64, it's on the Sublogic, but it's not on the Microsoft one. So I guess maybe that answers my question in regards to the scenery discs, uh, where there's airports on the Sublogic one uh, flight simulator, but when we go over to the Microsoft one, even though the scenery discs are made by Sublogic, apparently there are airports that were not put in there. So I guess maybe the IBM PC had a little bit less space to work with. So. Well, now things are making a little bit more sense as far as to why things are not in one versus the other. So, well, we're getting some... See why we're following the same flight plan? We're making interesting discoveries like this. All right, so we're here. That's good. Um, and if you go ahead and leave a thumbs up, that would be good too. And subscribe, that's even better. And for yourself, if you hit that notification bell, you get to know when the next video comes up and just videos in general. So thanks a lot for joining me on this flight. Yeah, it was an hour long, but uh, hope you enjoyed the company. And I will see you on the next leg of our journey. And hopefully there'll be an airport. <laughs>